Hello and welcome to State of the Economy, a show that connects you with key policy makers and thinkers. Uh, today we have with us the Chairman of Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, Mr. Rahul Khuller, uh, who is uh, at present in the middle of uh, this big mess in the telecom industry which he's trying to fix. Uh, welcome to our show, uh, Mr. Khuller. Uh, the big news yesterday was uh, uh, the cabinet uh, clearing the new reserve prize for uh, the re-auction of uh, the 2G licenses as per the Supreme Court uh, directive. Now, yet again, I find uh, that the industry is uh, complaining that uh, the price is too high, the costs are prohibitive, the tariffs will go up. Uh, uh, now, how far are these complaints justified? Because I have seen the telecom industry cry wolf now for 15 years. I have never seen them happy. So, so I'd like to have your take on this. Yeah, um, I think we've already uh, laid to rest many of these uh, ghosts which the industry has conjured. Um, one was that there would be a huge increase in tariffs. Uh, I'm not saying we're the last word, but we have done a comprehensive analysis which shows that even if the auction price of Spectrum were to be 18,000 crores, oh then uh, a tariff increase of about 5 paisa per minute would more than recover everything over a 20 That's the study horizon. that you had done. Yeah. That's correct. Okay, okay. Now, so at 14,000, uh, what would it will It will probably be even less than that. So my guess is even at a 14, I mean, if 14,000 crores is the final auction price. Mm -hmm. Remember what has been announced is merely a flow price, yeah, okay. a reserve price. So if the auction closes at 14,000, then my guess is that uh, the actual uh, impact on tariffs will uh, in fact be less than 5 paisa. It will be close to 5 paisa. And with, five pa with the 5 paisa tariff increase, they will more than recover all their legacy costs. I think the real point uh, you're making here is that uh, the industry never tires of saying uh, spectrum is too expensive. Uh, when did you last hear them say that, oh yes, we got Spectrum for a song. Yeah, yeah. And even when they did manage to get Spectrum very cheap, then they didn't say anything uh, about it. They just uh, attributed the gains they got to their own uh, enterprise and their own uh, risk-taking behavior. I think the truth of the matter is that everybody has to learn that Spectrum is a valuable resource. Uh, it has to be auctioned, it has a commercial value. And uh, ask yourself the following question. Yeah. If companies came in three years ago paying 10,000 rupees for Spectrum, which is what they did, many of these companies just bought Spectrum, yeah. and they competed without raising prices, sure. then what is the hullabaloo about uh, tariffs going to be? If somebody as recently as three years ago or four years ago buys Spectrum at 10,000 crores for 4.4 megahertz, sure. which is what they did, yeah. and they managed to compete in today's tariffs, yeah. they didn't raise tariffs, they didn't say that we want to have higher tariffs than the rest of the industry. So you're and suggesting that it becomes second nature for them to, to keep saying that? Spectrum is very costly. No, I think the real problem here uh, is twofold. It's not the auction that is bothering them. What's bothering them is that that price will be used to determine the stock of Spectrum that they already have. See, think of... Which will come up for renewal. Uh, that's it. So, there, so there's a real moral hazard problem here. Mm -hmm. What's happening is I'm sitting on Spectrum, let's say 10 megahertz. Okay. And today, some spectrum gets auctioned. Now, if today's auction is at very low prices, whether I bid or I don't bid, I don't care because I don't want that spectrum. But if that price is used to determine the stock of spectrum I'm already hanging on to, yeah. so then the I want it as low as possible so that I pay as little as possible. So basically, you're suggesting that spectrum, which was given away, say, five, six years ago, at 1651 uh, uh, crores. Uh, uh, and even before that, at even less than even that. Even less than that. 
the yeah. moment it comes up for relicensing. Yeah, the metro, the ones uh, in early 2000. That's correct. Metro circles. 94, 95, 98, yeah. 2000, correct. Yeah, virtually for nothing. So when they come up for renewal, say, 2014, you know. That's uh, correct. So for them, the new benchmark will be the, the last uh, option. Absolutely correct. That's right. So that's the moral hazard problem that even if I'm bidding, even if I'm not bidding in this auction, I would like the price to be as low as possible because I'm sitting on a stock of spectrum which when repriced at today's prices will clobber me. So for me, the best interest is I don't want to buy any more spectrum. But ideally in my world, if spectrum could be given away at a thousand crores, then what it means is that I will get my stock of 10, 10 megahertz yeah. spectrum also at 1,000 crore. Do you, do you feel, uh, Mr. Kuller, that, <clears throat> that at this point in time, uh, the industry pessimism partly also flows from the fact that we are in a down cycle of, uh, of, of uh, business uh, uh, I, and, and therefore they cannot possibly foresee uh, an up cycle, what an up cycle might produce. Maybe, maybe when growth improves in general. Uh, Let me answer that at two levels. I think one, you're absolutely right. The general mood is uh, despondent. And uh, what they're seeing is that demand is not picking up. Now, that is something which is, as you correctly observed, affecting all sectors. It is affecting fast-moving consumer goods, durable consumer goods, everything. Yeah. So that is nothing new. I think the second aspect is industry-specific. And the industry specific problem is that their margins are under very great pressure. And their margins are under very great pressure because of legacy decisions and legacy costs. Legacy that is, wh what has happened in the last five to seven years, mm -hmm. either in terms of a choice of technology or in terms of an estimation of demand, or in terms of what they paid for 3G spectrum. Okay. All these are legacy decisions. Legacy decisions yeah. They incurred costs. And they, they went into it with their yeah. eyes open. Yeah. Absolutely. The problem is, the implication for that is that in 2011, 12, and 12, 13, okay. for the industry as a whole, they're going to have profits uh, before interest in taxation, which will be negative, negative. Which means that they will not have to pay any taxes. Okay but they will have to draw on their pool of uh, depreciation to discharge their okay. interest rate costs. Sure. Now, this will continue until bad. they are able to amortize and get rid of the legacy costs that they've got on their books. Okay. Okay. Sure. So, you, ha you have this sort of double whammy coming at the same time. Okay. One is uh, an economy go that's going, okay. growth is decelerating, okay. and therefore demand for the services going down and at the same time legacy costs which are impinging on the industry mm -hmm. in terms of pressures on margins mm -hmm. yeah. so you have these two coming together mm -hmm. and then you have firm specific problems yeah sure this is the industry specific i am talking about it. Yeah. firm specific problems are you know could they could they get a deferred payment option or some uh, some such mechanism where that in fact is what the government has announced what they are doing is mm -hmm. saying that look we will not ask you to pay for the spectrum you bid for today up front. You backload it. You backload it. You pay some of it up front to get a moratorium for two years and then you, you pay the rest. So I think the decisions the government has taken in terms of being permitting bidders mm -hmm. to auction spectrum or to, to, to pledge spectrum really, okay. as well as to uh, get deferred payment mm -hmm. or, a, or a moratorium of sorts. This is essentially designed to make it easier for their financial management on one side for the companies and equally for the bankers okay. to have the requisite degree of comfort in lending money to people who will need to borrow money to pay for the spectrum. Okay. Now we'll, uh, we'll come back and uh, discuss in detail this legacy cost that you're talking about but uh, after a small break, uh, uh, please don't go away and keep watching uh, Ratsuba Television.
Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are having a conversation with Chairman of Telecom Re Regulatory Authority of India, Mr. Rahul Kulla. Uh, Mr. Kulla, you were rightly uh, pointing out legacy costs uh, as an industry issue. Now, you've done a calculation which I, I also wrote about in my newspaper, which is that the industry has accumulated uh, a, a debt of 2 lakh crore, now which could go up to maybe by another 1.5 lakh crore after they pay for uh, the spectrum uh, in this round. How do you think uh, that the industry has got to this situation? Uh, because I am a bit puzzled because here is a sector which the world has been hailing as the fastest growing anywhere in the world. Uh, the subscriber base uh, grew from some you know, 100 million to some 800 million in a span of 7-8 years. Now in such a fast growing market, how have companies uh, come to this sorry pass? It really puzzles me. Yeah. I think two things have happened. Uh, one is the sorts of numbers you're talking about represent debt not only of the wireless operators but also of the passive infrastructure companies which means the guys who actually put up the towers. So uh, if you look at the debt of uh, just the wireless, the big big yeah. operators, yeah. it will be a little less than that 200,000 you are talking about. Okay. But that said, I think three things explain what has happened. One is uh, that uh, the big jump came last uh, in 2010 when the auctions took place on 3G spectrum mm -hmm. and at that point of time really what happened was you effectively uh, increased debt by about 100,000 crores like that okay. Okay. and that was because people bid for two types of things. Mm -hmm. First there was the auction for 3G spectrum yeah. and second there was the auction for what is now called 4G, 4G you know, yeah. BW, yeah. BWA. So basically, you sold Spectrum the first time through a scientific, open, transparent auction, yeah. and people bid. So that increased the debt drastically. So that's one problem. Second, the second problem is that many, at least some of the operators, started out life with one technology thinking one technology is better than the other yeah. and then had to then switch. They switch then they had to switch back also. So they switched and it's a real problem when you're trying to run two technologies at the same time and especially if you game into the the game at two different points of time. I mean, if you bought Spectrum earlier and you went with one technology and then you later came in and bought Spectrum at a later higher price mm -hmm. with a different technology and was saddled with one technology where the ecosystem was virtually collapsing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you have a problem because you run So you're saying that it, it, it also had to do with some of their decisions in, in terms of... Uh, Entirely. I think that a lot of it is, as I said, I, I mentioned it obliquely when I was referring to choice of technology was one decision. Mm -hmm. The second was the, the, as I said, the auction in 2010, which suddenly inflated it by... You were, meaning, if you look at pre-2010, uh, Eight or 2007, yeah, sure. you will not see this sort of indebtedness. It is post the 2010 auction. Yeah. Third, I think, is the point that I also made again obliquely about estimation of demand. Now, if it is your belief that 3G demand is going to grow and balloon enormously, mm -hmm. you will bid very high for 3G spectrum. Mm -hmm. Now, the truth of the matter is that people did bid high for the 3G spectrum. Sure. But where have the 3G services rolled out? Where is the demand? Yeah. Meaning there are very, so very few people. On that too. I think there is a, there was overestimation of demand and they, they miscalculated. Probably it flowed from the euphoria of growth between 2003 and 2008. If, if you recall, that's exactly what I said in, in, in an interview I gave uh, some days ago that, um, you got used to the idea that you're going to add 10 million customers and therefore this is going to go on forever. See, this is how the party will go on forever. So yeah. suddenly it, it started plateauing. By then they had committed to all these uh, big costs and big debt. Yeah, that and also one thing which you must also, you know, understand. 
any spectrum auction can be afflicted like all auctions with the winner's curse. Sure, sure. Now, it's not that the winner's curse is not afflicted other people, meaning think of BT. Sure. BT got into huge trouble because they overbid for spectrum and then had to dispose of assets. The first uh, auction of spectrum that was done in Germany. In Europe, yeah. yeah. Again, was, again there, there was huge winner's curse. So I think it's a combination of these factors which has resulted in the indebtedness that you are seeing. But coming back, uh, Rahul, Rahul to, the, to the larger uh, question, uh, you said something very interesting. It, you, uh, you said after 2010 auction that the debt problem came. And of course, they made some miscalculation in regard to 3G subscription uh, that they thought they might get. Now, if you see pre-2010, it appears that uh, if you look at the telecom sector, I mean, your job as a regulator and the government policy, uh, the objective as, as one where uh, the, there's a good balance between consumer surplus, producer surplus, and, and government revenues. Uh, there seemed to have been a b balance at that time, uh, but because of, uh, of various uh, other episodes that came in between, uh, like the Raja, A Raja episode, the corruption case. Uh, now, do you feel that the balance, uh, it seems to have got somewhat uh, disturbed and, uh, and this whole civil society demand that there must be auction of everything and, uh, and therefore, uh, is it shifting away from uh, consumer surplus towards government revenue or producer surplus towards government revenue? I think that consumers got a good deal, but the first phase of the telecom industry, the guys who really got the, the really good deal was the producer. producer yeah. The, the producer, first phase, they, 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 it was, they were laughing their way to the bank, bank yeah. and consumers this was got... 2004 and 2007, right? Okay. I, I think the produce, consumers got something, but much of the producer's gain was really quasi-rents, and okay. they, those came at the cost of uh, government revenues. Yeah. So you'd say in the first phase, government kind of uh, sacrificed revenues in yeah, favor of co consumers and producers. Yeah. I think the first seven, eight years, yeah. starting in 95, 95, was this story. When the industry was very nascent. Yeah. Na the nascent industry, was the story was let the producer gain, the consumer gains. And, and the, I think what has happened today is that uh, there's been some rebalancing for sure. but. That rebalancing is between producer and the government, government. not so much at any consumer loss. Yeah, consumer if any, still getting it cheap. Yeah. That's right. If anything, I think the consumer has had it pretty damn good for the last 15, 20 years, which is why, I uh, mean, ask yourself this, that if, if, if a 10% inflation mm -hmm. is what you and I normally live with, for whether it is for shoes or ice cream or... Mm -hmm. services or what have you, then why not a 10% price inflation for something sure. like a telecommunications? Sir? Very, 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 very logical. That, that's so, that comes to 5 paisa per minute. Sure. Now, to my mind, therefore, the answer to your question is that if I can ask a consumer to pick up 5 paisa per minute, I'm not asking him to bear something An extra 5%. insurmountable. Yeah. And as I have pointed out to you, the analysis shows that if they push through a 5% tariff increase, yeah. you will rebalance their profitability with government revenues sure, sure. and no one is going to be anyone, any the great loser. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we'll come back and uh, discuss more of this, uh, but after a break, uh, please don't go away and uh, keep watching Ratsubha Television. Welcome back to uh, the State of the Economy. Uh, we are having a conversation with uh, the chairman of TRI, uh, Mr. Rahul Kula. You were uh, very rightly saying that the consumers have got a good deal in, in the uh, telecom uh, sector. So now, you are saying that it is probably justified if they just going by inflation, if they pay about 4-5 paisa more. 
and this is exactly what your reserve price uh, 14,000 uh, crore does. Uh, so now going forward, how do you uh, foresee the, the Supreme Court uh, order uh, being implemented in full? Uh, do you think uh, the auctions will go through in the next uh, three months? Uh, well, I, I certainly hope so. I, I think that now all the essential pieces are in place. You have a floor uh, reserve price. You have, uh, I think they have shortlisted two or three people for uh, as an auctioneer. So now it's just a matter of drawing up the drill and saying that, look, this is the schedule which we will abide by. From the press reports this morning, I think it's that Monday they will take a decision on that schedule. Okay. So once that in, that's in place, everything is in pretty much on track in the sense that you cannot conduct an auction without knowing what the reserve price is. Sure, yeah. And you cannot conduct an auction without an auctioneer. I think both those essentials are there. Now you have to put the rest of the... So it's just a matter of going I through with it. What, what's the sort of feedback have you got uh, since yesterday? Industry people must be coming back to you, uh, well, giving their response, reaction to this 14,000 crore reserve price. Even before a decision is taken, meaning privately, and I shall not name the company's concerned, many who wish to bid in the auction had indicated that they were willing to bid uh, at the at even the try level, uh, try recommended prices. So Ooh, sure. I I don't think that you will. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. I don't think you will. So they would be happier with the uh, with the reserve price is much lower than the try. Well, actually, some people have actually said that so today. I Meaning, some people have been quoted in the press saying that yes, at fourteen thousand crores, you will bid in any case. So I think that uh, definitely one, two, maybe three people, mm -hmm. three parties definitely will bid at that price. Mm -hmm. As I said, to you mean at fourteen thousand crores? At fourteen thousand crores for five megahertz. Mm -hmm. As I said, the real issue is not so much how this auction goes; mm -hmm. it is twofold. How this auction affects mm -hmm. the price of the existing stock of Spectrum and the repricing of the Which will come up for renewal in 2014. So that's problem number one. The second problem, of course, will be how far above the reserve price the auction goes. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, that is a critical thing which somebody needs to think about. That look, if indeed there are not, uh, if, they, if the auction goes for 14, just for 14,000 because people stay away, then what it really means is that uh, right from the beginning there were only a handful of bidders who were actually interested in getting it. Okay, yeah, and sure. that shows up the moral hazard problem which I was telling you earlier. Yeah. So I think that's uh, uh, a bit something to be thought about. Let's see how the auction goes. Let's not prejudge what happens right now. Yeah, sure. uh, Criticism that the industry is, has come up with is why is the government only putting up for auction a limited portion of what has got, uh, uh, what they have, uh, or what the Supreme Court has uh, uh, directed them to re-auction. Why not the entire lot? Uh, now, is there any merit to that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, let me explain. The reg regulator, regulator had sent uh, a bunch of recommendations. Those recommendations partly related to auctioning of spectrum, but also related to what is called refarming. Refarming is just a technical... Refarming is off the table now, no? No, I don't think it's off the table. Mm -hmm. Refarming is basically the idea that you will use more efficient spectrum for the new technology. Okay. Okay. So since the 900 megahertz and 800 megahertz band mm -hmm. of spectrum was initially given to the 2G operators, mm -hmm. You want to move them out of the spectrum to 1800, 1900 megahertz spectrum and vacate this for LTE. Now, nobody's going to take away spectrum from you. All you want to do is you move from here to that other spectrum. Now, when you do this, you have to be at least have the assurance that there is enough spectrum available in the other band. If I was to auction all that spectrum, then the refarming would not become possible. Sure, sure, sure. So the government has to take a composite view of this composite. matter. It can't take a, a view on what is in auction in isolation mm -hmm. of what has to be done in terms of 
use of the entirety of the spectrum. I think that's the real issue. Sure, so sure. when you're looking at the entirety of the spectrum, you're saying, look, I need 2G services to continue and 3G and 4G, but I need to reserve certain spectrum for the new technologies. Yeah. And to make that possible, you have to have refarming. So that's the... That's and, you know, and one final question. Uh, the stock of spectrum that people already have, telecom companies which given in the past, when they come off a renewal in 2014, and if 14,000 crore becomes the benchmark uh, reserve price that time, have you done any study as to how much uh, will they, then the cost to the consumer uh, will go up, uh, the charges, uh, the, the, the per minute, uh, what consumer might have to pay? Have, have you done any forward study? Fact, that's exactly what we have done. We have not only calculated the five pesa I am talking to you about, factors in all of this. Oh, okay. okay. So factors it factors in refarming, it factors in repricing of extra spectrum okay. it factors sure, in sure. this auction of today's spectrum okay. please do not uh, live under the misapprehension that's only for this uh, that the auction of two blocks of eight blocks of 1.25 megahertz spectrum will cause a five it will not yeah, okay. the auction in itself you've taken a, a medium term view you've taken a medium term view the, yeah. the, the the auction itself will not cause even a one paisa increase in sure, tariffs sure. What will happen is that when you take into account a 20 year horizon and you factor in both refarming and repricing of spectrum so all it's a, along it's the a way. composite view that you have it's taken. It's a 20 year horizon view that is over the next 20 years as licenses are renewed, as spectrum is repriced and if you pushed all this onto the telecom service providers sure. then a five to six pesa increase would more than compensate them for everything. Sure, if, if that is so, it's not such a bad deal for the consumer either. Thank you very much for uh, being with us. Uh, that's all uh, uh, we have in this episode. Uh, we'll be back soon. Uh, goodbye.